Hey guys, it's John from John's DIY Playground. I'm going to do a little experiment today. Um, we want to see what the effect of radio waves have when they're submerged in water. So if you're thinking about transmitting data from some sort of, uh, let's say, underwater drone or submarine, you have to think about what radio waves do in water. In general, they don't like water. Uh, you think about submarines, they use sonar to transmit uh, a lot because sound transmits much better through water than radio signals. Um, when they do use radio signals they use a very low frequency. Um, I have seen some remote control submarines that really aren't low frequency they're using 75 megahertz but for today's experiment I've got a little micro drone here that runs on a 2.4 gigahertz system or a Wi-Fi. That would be about the same as uh, a Bluetooth transmitter it also uses 2.4 gigahertz radio signal. So that's a much higher frequency than the 75 megahertz like say a Neptune submarine or something that's even uh, professional communications like a naval sub. So what we're going to do is we're going to turn this drone on and just get the propeller spinning. Um, this controller here, when it's uh, turned on, it can force the throttle up, but we're not going to take off. We're just going to kind of sit and let the prop spin. I'll demonstrate what happens when I turn it on, and then if I turn off the transmitter, what will happen. I've got the battery on my drone now turned on. Uh, with this controller, the way it works, it's got a slow and a fast control. I'll just turn it on like that, and then if you do up and down, it's now paired with the copter, but watch what happens. I'm going to turn it on and not take off, and then I'm going to turn off the power to the transmitter. So here we go. Spinning. Then I turn it off. The propeller stop, and it waits to reconnect uh, with the transmitter, so it'll just sit idle. So what that means is when we do our experiment, I'm going to keep this thing on, of course, and then submerge it into water. If the prop stops spinning, that means it's lost uh, radio communication with the chopper. So that's our visual cue that this is or is not working. So let me get my transmitter put in a bag, uh, reconnect to the chopper, and we'll dunk it in the plastic bucket, and then we'll try the metal one, which might have a different effect. All right, I've got my transmitter in this nice Ziploc bag. Hopefully it uh, doesn't lose the seal. This thing isn't waterproof in any way. So I'm going to turn it on like we did before. I'm paired to the chopper. And now let's get the throttle going. And now let's dunk it first in the plastic bucket of water. I'm about halfway down right now. Now about completely submerged. I'm going to move it over to the back edge of the bucket. And that's good. We've still got connection, so that's a good sign. Chopper's still working. Now let's go into the stainless steel bucket. Everything looks good. Oh, and there you go. We lost connection. Um, oh, look, I have to come out back out. It works again. Then I go back under. I'm down about five inches, six inches, and it stops working. So there you have it. Uh, if you are going to design something uh, with your data transmission in mind. Being inside a metal container is also equally not good, especially if it's completely enclosed metal that acts like a radio frequency shield. Um, for uh, best transmission, I guess, use lower frequency if you can help it. 2.4 gigahertz is not the best, but uh, you'll get longer ranges if you do use a lower frequency. Uh, I hope you learned something here today, and if you like this video, please hit the like. Uh, also, please subscribe. You'll get automatic notification when I make more videos. So thanks for stopping by and watching today with John's DIY Playground.